Welcome once again, PWA fans. My name is Aaron Hurt here, ready to rock and roll on another fantastic edition of PWA on YouTube. Back in action from the Fairfield County Fairgrounds. Once again, three huge matches on tap for you. Two title matches. Tommy Forte defends the U.S. Championship and Randy the Rowdy Hillbilly defends the Heavyweight Championship. But we're going to start out with tag team action, a match that is going to have huge implications down the road on who faces our new tag team champions. If you caught our last episode, you saw those crazy hillbillies get those belts back where they belong around the waist of Juan and John D. So let's go down to ringside to my partner Carrington Carlucci for this opening tag team match featuring Los Boricuas and the duo of outlaw Tony James and the franchise player Chris Cruitt. Welcome back wrestling fans to another edition of the PWA here on YouTube. We thank you for joining us and what an action-packed hard-hitting edition of PWA we've got for you here on this time all headed up by the huge main event for the PWA championship the Nordic Nightmare Bjorn taking on Randy the Rowdy Hillbilly for the PWA heavyweight championship but this opening contest for this edition features Chris Druid and Tony James versus Los Bariquas in what should be an exciting tag team action And it's been uh, a little while since we've seen Chris Pruitt and Tony James together. Both men have at times pursued singles action, but have always made a formidable duo when coming together on the same accord. And here comes the franchise player. Blanked by his friend and partner, Tony James, the outlaw. Bringing, of course, that signature it appears to be a cowbell. And rope out with it to ringside. And these two men, a couple of veterans, definitely ready for action. And I say that they're going to be challenged by the young tandem of Los Periquas, Jeremy Rodriguez and Krypton. An exciting tag team. And these two youngsters with a lot of fan base here in Lancaster. Getting a very nice ovation. And these two young budding stars here in the PWA, part of the youth movement. Very exciting. And on top of that, these two youngsters are pretty good competitors inside the ring. This is going to be an exciting tag team matchup. Looking forward to this showdown between these two, which... I heard you say as I was taking my seat that you're looking forward to this. I certainly am as well. And we know that the crowd here at the Fairfield County Fairgrounds is hyped for this match. And this could go a long way, Carrington. Uh, I believe you would agree in establishing new contenders, number one contenders, that is, for our new tag team champions that we saw crowned uh, our last time out in the form of the crazy hillbillies. I would have, I was getting ready to make that point, Aaron, as my mic kind of uh, had a little bit of a malfunction there for a moment. But yes, this should be a great tag team matchup and great to see some sportsmanship between these two uh, tag teams. 
Well, noticeable in that was Tony James uh, perhaps not acknowledging said gesture. He's been quite ornery, feisty even for him. You know, he's the kind of guy who asks no quarter and gives none, but he's been especially on edge in the latter half of 2018. We, we have not seen Pruitt and James team together for a number of weeks here, so I doubt they have any ring rust. They're both absolute workhorses in the gym and in training, but you never know what even a brief time apart from each other could do to their coordination. Well, we know what Tony James is doing to Krypton, and that's uh, giving him a hard body slam and then right into the arm bar. It looks like he's trying to uh, keep himself in between Krypton and Jeremy Rodriguez here at the early goal. Now, honestly, a favorable matchup for Krypton is one where he gives up only 100 pounds or so. You know, I mean, he's clearly the lightest competitor, and Tony James will relish in the possibility of finding new ways to break this man down. Now, that's the thing with Tony James. I mean, uh, he's going to make you earn your stripes out there, and I think that's exactly what he's looking to do with Krypton and Jeremy Rodriguez in this Tried matchup. Tried to up the drop kick, but just couldn't avoid it, and it was on the money by Krypton. The spring in his legs is amazing, and to say nothing of his partner, Jeremy Rodriguez, these men are uh, equally matched in terms of not just their uh, effervescent enthusiasm, but uh, their athleticism as well. And I gotta ask you, Aaron, is youth and enthusiasm, along with their obvious great in-ring skills, is it gonna be enough to overtake this veteran tandem of James and Pruitt? If I had to go out on a limb, if I had to put money on it, I would say the crowd support that they have in the building on this night could prove to be the difference maker. Not that the franchise player or the outlaw give much consideration to the whims of the fans, but the support is, is so enthusiastic for these two young Hispanic men that it has to give them some kind of edge when they're down and on the verge of getting beaten to hear the, the crowd come to life for them is an intangible that's hard to replicate. And notice Pruitt staying right in on the elbow, didn't even reposition himself, wanted to maintain the pressure with the cover. Well, that's exactly what he wants to do. He wants to keep the crowd out of this match. He wants to slow it down. Oh, my, got him up for that package. Pile driver just spikes him. Vintage franchise player. This one could be over before it got started. I Just the count of two. I can't believe Rodriguez kicked out of that. Not too many people kicked out of Chris Cruitt's package pile driver. So he might be an inch or two shorter after the way he got dropped on his head. Rodriguez fighting right back into this one, though. Got the momentum going towards the ropes and able to get through it to the outside, up and over. Huge display of offense. And notice he's bringing him right back into the ring, not gonna let him catch his breath one moment on the outside. Through it wisely reaching out, knowing that he was right near the bottom rope, did not expend any energy to kick out, but instead just simply grabbed the bottom rope. He knows where he is at all times in that ring. Oh. Out of the chicken wing into the big splash. We've seen that maneuver in the past from Los Bariquas. I love how the Bariquas use each other and know each other so well in their tandem offenses. Make this a very, very exciting team to watch. Oh, bridges over almost a mood a lot here. Great versatility shown from the Luchador. Not all about flips and dives. Yeah, this young he man might slap a hold on you too. Yeah, he's proving that he is a uh, a man that wears many masks, so to speak. At least the one for now. But again, threw it to the ropes. And we see a lot of fans, especially our young fans at ringside, with those souvenir masks, become one of the most popular merchandise items that we have to offer. 
Well, it only stands to reason Krypton quickly becoming one of the more popular stars here. Oh, but he could be in a bad way here. Pruitt's going for that clutch. The crap lock, as he has referred to it, uh, perhaps facetiously. Because when you get it in, all you can do is say, oh, crap. Pruitt in the proverbial wrong part of town, to use a dated wrestling reference. Oh, vaults off the back of his partner. Puts the elbow right into the sternum. Jeremy Rodriguez right there to follow up on this advantage they may have created for themselves. Oh, snaps him down with a big neck breaker, chin breaker. Almost a, a cutter of sorts. There's a more traditional style hangman's neck breaker. Going right in for the cover, and here comes the outlaw to break up the pin attempt. Much like we saw Gary Gandy do in our last episode, that impromptu match that he had with the franchise player. We're seeing Jeremy Rodriguez work on the neck. Well, it's no secret the franchise player has had a history of neck issues if uh, memory serves properly. So it's uh, good wisdom on the part of any opposition to oh, attack the neck. I was about to say it was the knee that proved to undo Chris Pruitt last time. And I think we're seeing a repeat. When we came down off that leapfrog, it just gave way. Our last episode, Gary Gandy attacked Chris Pruitt viciously after the bell, I might add, with a steel chair to the knee. And obviously the franchise player has not had enough time to recover. No. And it, it could be the difference maker. I'm a little wondering why he didn't go over and make the tag immediately, but there's the tag. Why? Probably the fact that he doesn't want to show his opponent that he's clearly incapacitated. Although he might not have any choice the way he's favoring that. It's obvious to everybody in this building that he's on one bad wheel. Textbook belly back suplex from the outlaw. And only with the referee's count, not to cut you off. Goes right back to it. Veteran instincts making the man exert that much more energy having to kick out multiple times. Oh, love the head scissors. Yeah. Right here on the mat. And this is just a classic wear down hold here from Tony James. Well, this is exactly what he's got to do. He's got to ground the man. He's got to keep him off, off of his feet on the mat. Jeremy Rodriguez is much less effective in a scenario like this. Oh, Tony James just drives him head first into the mat. And he's nothing but bad attitude, but it's it's not just bad, it's spoiled at this point. Yeah, it's, it seems to be he is a bit more aggressive than what I've seen Tony James in, in, uh, in recent months here. A move over like that, if, if he's using his knees to put pressure on the temples while he drives him head first into the mat, goes for that abdominal stretch. And again, still maintaining the, the action in his half of the ring, keeping Rodriguez away from Krypton. And showing that veteran tag team instinct of trying to draw the opponent into the ring, get the referee looking one direction so he can use that to his favor. Instead, just drops, him with, drops his opponent with a slam and makes the tag. And now here comes the wounded Chris Pruitt even using any 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 kind of effort right here is damaging to that knee. You can see Chris Pruitt is, is, is hurt. You know, hobbled at the very least. And testing the limits of that knee by going up to the middle rope. Pool was empty. Came up short with that forearm drop. Looked like Rodriguez was targeting the knee, but instead went for the right hands. I won't say out of sympathy, but maybe out of sportsmanship, realizing who it hurt. So now he's going to the upper level of the anatomy. Now he's going to the upper level of the ring. Strong splash. And again, Tony James coming in, saving his partner, saving the matchup. Great tag team wrestling. Rodriguez reaches out, makes the tag, brings Krypton back in after a long spell spin on the outside. Reversal of the Irish whip, here comes Pruitt in. Makes oh, no contact. Krypton, able to avoid that, but Pruitt avoids the kick, not the second time. What's he trying to do here? He's gonna have to dig deep for something, oh! 
hoisted the, the crew had hoisted the frame of Krypton. He came down hard and he may have uh, dislocated that patella. Yeah, now he might have evened things up perhaps in terms of uh, the injuries or the limitations. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what, by the camera angle exactly what happened there. It might have been the ankle or the knee. I'm not real certain, but definitely Krypton is hurt. And Tony James wants to, he's coming in, he's... Absolutely no mercy whatsoever on his opponent here. One leg Boston he's crab. Blood. Single leg crab. And just drags him off the ropes. Where's the sportsmanship in that? Oh, I had no choice but to tap out. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner is at Box 20 Shades and the franchise player, Chris Pruitt. Well, a huge victory for Tony James and Chris Pruitt, but somewhat ruthless in the way that they went about it, but uh, the end justifies the means, I'm sure. What I want to know is why Tony James beat a hasty retreat back to the locker room by himself. Yeah, I mean, he's not even standing out there to get his hand raised with his partner. Definitely a valiant effort on the part of Los Bariquas, though. This was a hard-fought battle, but they just came up a little short. I'm left with more questions than I have answers, though, at the moment regarding this. Rodriguez trying to figure out what Tony James had in mind, and apparently franchise player doesn't know any more clearly himself. I'd like to get a medical update on Krypton. I mean, this, this young man appears to be in a bad, bad way. Maybe we'll be able to get credit where it is due to the franchise player, at least. For being respectful of the effort his opponent gave. And for putting his body on the line like he did. Absolutely. I hate to see a young man with such potential possibly suffer an injury that could affect his career permanently going forward. Uh, it doesn't appear that uh, it's all that bad at the moment, but knee injuries are definitely difficult to diagnose, especially when I'm sitting here at ringside. Yeah, I, I, I'm hoping at some point here in the broadcast, I we'll, should say in the backstage area. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I'm hoping at some point we'll be able to get uh, a medical update on Krypton. That way we can let all the great fans know uh, that are watching us uh, what's going on with Krypton because I know that uh, this this youngster does have a lot of, uh, of, of fans out there that I'm sure that are going to be uh, pretty concerned to his well-being. Well, share your well wishes, your, your support for uh, Krypton and Jeremy Rodriguez at uh, PWA Ohio on Facebook. That is your source for the latest up-to-the-minute announcements of matches you can expect in an upcoming show. Uh, ticket on sale announcements or direct link to the PWA is PWA Ohio on Facebook. We'll be back in a short while, fans, with much more on this edition of PWA continuing from the Fairfield County Fairgrounds. Fans not sure what there is to say about uh, the way that match just ended. Definitely credit where it is deserved to Tony James for putting away Krypton, but he walked off to the back uh, looking like he didn't want anything to do with his partner or his opponents. Not sure what that means, but we'll have to keep an eye on that situation in the weeks to come. But definitely, you can count on Nick Stevens taking a long look at that victory when he determines the next set of contenders for our new tag team champions, those crazy hillbillies. But we've got so much more to come on this edition, fans. We don't want to waste any more time. We've got the U.S. title on the line next, the mysterious Mr. X, who's been tormenting Jimmy Fahrenheit for weeks now, gets his shot at Tommy Forte in the U.S. Championship. We'll see if that situation becomes any more clear at the end of the match. And make sure that you stick around for the huge main event, heavyweight title on the line. Bjorn once again goes into the ring to face Randy the Rowdy Hillbilly. All of that and much more on this edition of PWA. Hello PWA fans, my name is Aaron Hurt, here to tell you all about how you can keep up with PWA online. Just search PWA Ohio on Facebook or on YouTube or 
check out PWAOhio.com for all of the latest information about upcoming events, the latest videos and highlights of past events, and interviews with your favorite PWA wrestlers. So make sure that you like and follow all of those pages. That's PWAOhio.com, PWA Ohio on Facebook, and PWA Ohio on YouTube. And follow along with all of us here from Premier Wrestling Alliance, and we hope to see you at the PWA Arena very soon. The following contest is scheduled for one fall with a 45 minute time limit, and it is for the PWA United States Great match here on this edition of PWA on first, YouTube. The special guest referee for this match, Mr. Center of the Earth, Jimmy Fahrenheit. And as you heard my colleague announce, Jimmy Fahrenheit is going to be special guest referee for this matchup, which is for the United States Championship. Tommy Forte, the current U.S. champion, going to be putting the title on the line against the mysterious Mr. X, who it was revealed recently that Mr. X was indeed the masked individual back in Zanesville who interfered and cost Jimmy Fahrenheit possibly, anyway, the United States Championship. Of course, it was Jimmy Fahrenheit, Tommy Forte, and Jeffrey John in a triple threat matchup in which this Mr. X, a at that time, an unknown assailant, a man under a mask, came out of nowhere and basically blindsided Jimmy Fahrenheit. And, now, and we've not heard anything since, but... Uh, a, a little bit wondering exactly why the, all of a sudden Mr. this Mr. X gets a championship opportunity, especially at a title that is prestigious as the United States Championship. Kind of wonder uh, what strings he had to pull to make this happen or where he has friends at. I think you all are smart enough out there to make the inference. But here he comes. A man dressed in black, wearing the mask, and known only as Mr. X, getting this United States title opportunity. Something that I'm sure that Jimmy Fahrenheit wishes that he was getting instead of wearing the striped official shirt. But I know Jimmy Fahrenheit, he's gonna call this one right down the middle. And here comes the tank. A young man that I've known for a bulk of his professional wrestling career, and I can't say enough good things about how hard this young man has worked to become United States champion here in the PWA, and how proud he is to be your PWA US champion. This is gonna be a fantastic contest. One of the many reasons we have such a boisterous crowd here at the Fairfield County Fairgrounds. We have seen this rather unique situation uh, develop new twists and turns uh, ever since it all went down in Zanesville. I think that uh, in some ways the focus on how Jimmy was cost the title in a certain way diminishes the accomplishment that Tommy Forte made by winning it. But you certainly don't see any sour grapes from Jimmy Fahrenheit towards the man who holds that title. Oh my goodness, from behind, this Mr. X. Certainly not letting any grass grow under his feet as far as this goes with this matchup. Forte in trouble out of the shoot. Oh, but fires back. I assume that Tommy Forte watched the film of the match Jimmy Fahrenheit had with this man that led us to this point. Sent all the way to the outside, to the unforgiving concrete here. What's he looking for here? Builds up a full head of steam. Tope Suicida from the big man. 
That's something highly uncharacteristic from Tommy Forte. Doesn't normally leave his feet that often, but when he does, it makes a hard impact, and it was all over Mr. X. He might have put this man away just that fast. Only a two count. We did at least determine that this is the man that participated in the match we last saw. I know that there, for a time there was some speculation that there was one or possibly more than one or uh, maybe even more than that. Cover, hook of the leg, only a one count though. Yeah, quite honestly, it reminds me of the situation uh, we saw all the way back in 1990 involving uh, none other than the Black Scorpion. Don't want to invoke any uh, painful memories for uh, some of our older fans out there who may have uh, been through that particular experience, but it's the only thing I can relate it to in pro wrestling, at least uh, as far as I'm concerned. You know, this is just something altogether bizarre. Speaking of painful memories, I think Tommy Forte is going to have one after being choked over the middle rope. A look at this, comes across face wash with a boot. Forte might be picking up some teeth later. I've been trying to come up with any kind of clue, any kind of, of a thread that I could pull on to, to it, uh, determine the, the identity or to do some sort of uh, rhyme or reason to this, this whole situation. Uh, it, it, Maybe it has something to do with Zanesville, which is where we first saw the man. Maybe it has something to do with somebody from Jimmy Fahrenheit's past or Tommy Forte's past. I mean, I'm grasping at straws, but there has to be some explanation for this. Well, this man, whomever he is, this mysterious Mr. X certainly has an agenda, and it appears to be that it is to become United States champion, at least as we understand it thus far, Aaron Hurt. Yeah, and I have to wonder, if he does accomplish that goal, will he unmask voluntarily? Will he simply just uh, carry on uh, as this uh, mysterious Mr. X? But all of that is getting far ahead of things as Tommy Forte makes the cover, hooks the leg, but still only a two count. And Jimmy Fahrenheit, not a regular referee, not a trained referee as you would normally think, but doing an excellent job of staying right on top of each near fall situation here. Not showing any favoritism one way or the other. And I won't say that that uh, surprises me because I know uh, Jimmy Fahrenheit is a man of integrity, but uh, you would think in the back of his mind, he's gotta be thinking maybe just a little bit, hey, yeah. this Mr. X is the guy that cost me my opportunity to become US champion. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, the fact that he prevented Jimmy from winning the title, to, for him to have to count the three, for this man to take the belt from Tommy Forte would just be uh, uh, compounding the insult and and the the disrespect that I'm sure he feels. Nothing fancy, just knuckle on noggin from Mr. X to Tommy Forte, and then the follows up with a leg drop. Let's see if we get a cover. We haven't seen as Forte shoots the shoulder out at two and a half. We haven't seen too many distinct. Uh, machinations or maneuvers or, or mannerisms from uh, this masked man to to help us figure out who he might be been a very basic nondescript style but effective nonetheless in, in a short amount of time it's got him all the way to potentially walking out with the u.s championship hook in clothesline and immediately goes right over for the cover but neglects to grab a leg don't understand that Well, I would say that it, there's clearly more to this than just getting the title away from Tommy Forte. Somebody has put the thought into this Mr. X's head to do this. And we could sit here and speculate all day long as to who that person is, but we don't know about uh, enough about this man uh, to, to even uh, give a, a, a possible prediction at this point. And quite honestly, I think it's all irrelevant as long as Tommy Forte is still fighting to hold on to that title. Oh, leaping leg lariat there. And presses the issue, goes right back in for the cover. Whenever he hits a move, whenever he hits a, a, a big high impact move, he goes right over for the cover. So it's obviously that this man is simply trying to win the match one 
at least that's part of his gen that we said. He's, he's taking his sweet time making a cover, maybe looking for a little bit of Garvin stomp action here. This is also very confusing with this man, Mr. Rex. And, and, and Tommy Forte's in trouble. I will say, though, that high-impact maneuver that we saw, that big leaping kick, there's only a few men in the PWA that I know of that could do something like that. And that's a very short list, and I, I the names on that list, any one of them would trouble everyone in the PWA audience were it to be true. But again, I'm, I'm getting away from the match at hand here. In tight for the clothesline, going right back again for the cover, only getting two. And, and Tommy Forte, unfortunately uh, for him, has been wrestling most of this matchup from his back. Absolutely, he's been fighting uphill the whole time. One of the pitfalls of not knowing who your opponent is or have any way to prepare for him. But he's given it all he's got. It wasn't a fluke that he made it to the United States Championship just a short time after becoming a full-time singles competitor. I have been uh, monitoring this young man's career for quite some time. I've always said he's got all the tools to become a star in this industry, and now I'm just glad to see he's finally realizing that potential. He has definitely put all the pieces together here in 2018 and is on the roll of a lifetime when it comes to victory and uh, success in pro wrestling. But that grasp is always a tenuous one when you're a fighting champion like we know Forte to be. Jaw Jacker then followed it up with the European uppercut. Let's see what Mr. X has in mind. Oh, good Lord! Running boot right in the face. Tommy Forte could be out cold here, Aaron. Yeah, this could be it. This could be a new champion right here and now. Oh! Good gracious, that was close. Nobody knows anymore how close it was than Tommy Forte and Jimmy Fahrenheit and the masked man. Well, that's something he don't want to do. He don't want to put his hand on his official, especially when an official is Jimmy Fahrenheit. Yeah, don't want to give this man any reason to show favoritism. You can hear the audience solidly behind Tommy Forte here. Oh, he telegraphed the big boot. Gut shot could be looking for if he can get him hooked. What's he looking for here? Suplex holds on. Oh, Falcon Arrow, he did the deal. Hooks the leg. A lot of intestinal fortitude on the part of the challenger, Mr. Rex. We don't know who he is, but he's showing me something here, Aaron Hurt. No, if we knew this man's name, then perhaps we could promote him. Perhaps we could tell people what a great athlete we have on our roster because he's, sh he's showing all the potential in the world to possibly become U.S. champion. But there's some, there's some ulterior motive here that's keeping him from doing this on the up and up. Side headlock from Forte. Shoves him off shoulder block. Right down into the cover. Trying to put this man away. Not going to suffer this fool any longer in a manner of speaking. I don't know who's being fooled here. Oh, I, th I, I think he's, he's, he's working on the mask there a little bit. I, I got a brief look. We it saw might be. I saw a little bit of the chin. I think that's what Tommy's going for. What happens when we find out who this is? Oh my God, that's Chase Ryan. That is Chase Ryan. We haven't seen him in forever. Well, that's Jimmy Fahrenheit's former partner. They were team straight fire. They literally set the PWA on fire for months. Oh my gosh, I don't, I don't believe this. What do we have now? Does the match continue? What does this man do? Does he just run and hide? Well, I've got to ask you, was this Chase Ryan that, that, uh, that attacked uh, Fahrenheit back in Zanesville? Well, the plot definitely thickens. Hold well, up. got a match in the ring. Three count. Tommy Forte is still the champion. And still the PWA United States champion, Tommy Forte. It is all starting to come together now. 
Well, there's the official victory. Hand raised, Tommy Forte still your US champion, but a lot more questions than answers right now at this point. And we've got another title match on deck. Unbelievable. And this is proverbial front page news above the fold banner headline in the PWA. Chase Ryan was Mr. X and now he's staring holes into both Tommy Forte and his erstwhile partner Jimmy Fahrenheit. What has got into this man's head? Or maybe who? I got a feeling somebody's pulling the springs on this one. I don't think I have to give you three guesses about who it might be. What's the motivation? I have to ask, what is Chase's motivation here, Aaron Hurd? Motivation aside, what made him turn his back on his partner and on the fans? Well, we'll have a lot more time to contemplate that in the days to come. Right now, we got to get set for our heavyweight championship match, Bjorn and Randy, coming up next. PWA fans, Aaron Hurd here with you. If you like what you are seeing on YouTube, then don't miss the opportunity to see the action live and in person. The first Saturday of every month at the PWA Arena, 737 Slocum Avenue in Lancaster. Premier Wrestling Alliance is in action, plus select dates in towns near you. Check out PWAOhio.com for tickets for not just the arena events, but all events. Arena events start at $5. And that's PWAOhio.com for all of your ticket information. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm still shocked at what we just saw in our last segment. Chase Ryan being revealed as Mr. X. But now we're on to the main event, the Nordic Nightmare. Bjorn challenging Randy the Rowdy Hillbilly for the PWA Heavyweight Championship. And this one, if you remember in a past episode, and if you haven't seen it, I would sincerely suggest that you go back and take a look at the last time that these two men met. It was nothing short of a showdown. And here comes the massive, intimidating individual, and that's the most polite terminology I can use. The man monster Bjorn. This guy is just horrifying. Kind of makes me glad I don't have to get in the ring with him. And I'm just sitting here calling the match for him. A look of disgust on the face of the challenger. I would have to say that's disgust slash determination. Because he knows he's about to go to war. For the man who has fought hard to call himself the heavyweight champion of the PWA. He's earned that right. And if you thought that round one between these two was something, we're about to see something special right here and now, ladies and gentlemen. And here comes the champ. He just drops the belt, no, here we go. We are off and running, Carrington Carlucci with this huge main event before the referee can even call for the belt. Jordan is just battering away at Randy with that bone. And notice he's doing it before the bell, that, that way that there is no possible way he can get disqualified because the match isn't official yet. Senior official John Long finally able to get that weapon out of the reach of Bjorn, but I'm afraid the damage may be done. We know quite well that Bjorn 
doesn't simply want to take the title from Randy. He wants to outright injure the man and put him on the shelf to do what J.T. Hogg couldn't do, to do what Gary Gandy tried to do and couldn't do to end Randy's run in 2018. And an impressive and somewhat improbable run, as some people would put it. But Randy, as I said, has earned the right to be PWA Heavyweight Champion and isn't going to go quietly into that good night. Well, if it ends here and now, Randy has already earned a place in the history books as far as great champions in the lineage of PWA. But he is not going to give Bjorn the satisfaction of claiming the title without anything short of death. I would say, on Randy's part. And you are, he, he got tackled by Randy, and he just grabbed the hold of him. Just grabbed the hold of him, those massive arms. Well, he saw, he knows what happened to Randy throughout the wars he's been in in 2018. Big belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Just drives a 430 pounds oh. down, and again, you can practically hear the wind rushing out of the lungs of Randy all the way back here. Oh, not again. and barely gets his shoulder up. I would venture to say he might have cracked ribs. He may have internal injuries. But Bjorn knows just what damage J.T. Hogg did, and that's, those are injuries that even when they might be healed, they still continue to bother and nag, and Randy's in a bad way already. He had back injuries, rib injuries, shoulder, neck, knee, ankle problems. The quit is not in this young man's vocabulary. You will have to, as you said, just short of death, do everything you can to stop Randy the Rowdy Hillbilly, including that thunderous body slam. Just took him all the way down from the top rope. Nothing you can do to stop gravity. Bjorn. The damage it causes. Bjorn just measured his man, just taking his time with the physical dissection of the heavyweight champion. The crowd out of this. As you know, Randy is perhaps not even arguably the most popular competitor by a country mile, no pun intended, in the PWA. And they're sitting here at awe, in awe at what Bjorn is doing to the champion. And he has sucked the life out of this crowd as he is attempting to do with the champion and cement himself as the heavyweight champion here in the PWA. But I don't think Randy's ready to uh, let it go that quickly. This collision was almost fate. This was foretold, perhaps, in a certain way. There's no two greater forces in the PWA at the moment than to see them collide one-on-one -on -one to determine who emerges as the champion. We couldn't ask for anything more. Randy winding up with those big roundhouse rights. And it comes charging in with the short clothesline. And Randy is a 300 pounder bona fide by himself. And he, he is, is clearly giving up more than 100 pounds to Bjorn. I don't want to be disrespectful to the champion. He almost looks like a, 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 a small man in it's there. It's the only time that Randy is a, even a comparable to his opponent in terms of size or weight. He, he's usually the, the taller, bigger man against anybody on the roster. Modified Beal out of the corner and right over into the cover. And again, Randy shoots the right arm out to avoid the three count. You're neglecting to hook the leg. And another thing that we're noticing here with Randy, when he does kick out, he's just shooting the arm out. It's not the big powerful kick press out that, that he normally gives against an opponent. Bjorn is really wearing it down. Well, Randy is somebody who is, is uh, uh, somebody who benefits from the surge of adrenaline, who uses that to his advantage to change the momentum of the match. And he's going to need something along those lines here awfully soon, or he's an ex-champion. Speaking of using an advantage, Bjorn, the Nordic Nightmare, using all of that 430 plus pounds of weight to wear down and maul like a big old Kodiak bear on Randy the Rowdy Hillbilly. I don't think this is gonna be a long night for either of these men at the pace that they've been going. They're certainly not getting paid by the hour. Randy's starting to fade here. We could be seeing the, the crowning of a new champion right here, Aaron Hurt. You know that Bjorn has been focused on nothing less 
than his goal of destroying Randy. And you can clearly see the, the inability to do so by this point of the year is perhaps preoccupying him at this point. Randy trying to get himself, trying to build himself back into this matchup. Trying to get back to a vertical base. Gets his knee underneath him. Able to power up. Gets a little bit of separation from those elbows. Takes that huge boot right in the face and did not drop the big man. Barely took him back half a step. Not all his weight headed towards the corner. Comes in with that hip attack. Randy's gonna have to keep his foot on the gas here. Gonna have to maintain the momentum. Oh, what was that? Perhaps tried to throw a little curveball at Bjorn, looking for a tip up. I think Bjorn saw it coming and just cut the champion off of the pass. Randy might not have had his balance on that second rope either. Crisscross. Oh, what? What a surprising but effective maneuver from Bjorn. You don't see too many 430 pounders throw themselves in front of their opponent. But I was just going to say, definitely effective. He in effect, use a, a, a variable chop block to take out the leg. Yeah, just put himself right in the path of Randy. Usually you see that drop down used as almost a defensive maneuver, but in this case, it was purely offensive. Wonders never cease with Bjorn. This man, above everything else, is an incredible athlete. Look at the strength. Look at how easily he just got Randy up and over out of that side headlock. Drags his nearly lifeless body to the corner, setting him up for that bonsai drop. If he hits this, if he hits this, Aaron, we're going to have a new champion right here. It doesn't matter where he comes down with that 430 pounds, it's going to do damage. Oh! Took just a little bit too much time. I think he was jawing with the audience. A I don't know bit. if our camera caught it quite well, but it looks like he came down on the leg of Randy. You can see he's favoring that left leg. I think Bjorn might have come down on the ankle. Tried what to a display of strength! Unbelievable! Took the 430 pounder off his feet with one leg. Randy hits the rope, hits the big splash. He's put him away. I don't believe it. How in the heck, how did Randy survive? And that's exactly what he did. He survived this matchup to retain the PWA Heavyweight Championship. Fans, what a matchup. What a way to wrap up this edition of PWA on YouTube. Absolutely incredible. I think Randy's hurt. But at the end of the day, Aaron Hurd, he can still call himself champ. And he has just vanquished probably his most formidable foe to date. Well, whoever the next man that comes along to challenge has got to know the damage that Bjorn did to Randy in this match. And the longer you have to defend the title, the more those injuries can mount up. We'll see what bearing this has on the future of Randy as champion. But as you said, on this night, he holds that belt proud to the delight of the PWA fans. And the champ earned this win. No cheap victory tonight. I think, though, Bjorn might have taken a, a, a piece of Randy's hide in the process. Fans for early hurt. I'm 2K. Thanks again for joining us. So many things to talk about coming out of this episode, fans. Chase Ryan is Mr. X. Of all people, Chase Ryan stabbed Jimmy Fahrenheit in the back for what reason? We don't know. But Tommy Forte held on to that U.S. championship and is going to continue to defend it with pride and with honor throughout the rest of the year 2018 and beyond in the PWA. Randy the Rowdy Hillbilly barely survived the assault of Bjorn. Looks like he's got an injured ankle coming out of that, but he's still the champion as well. And and he lives to fight another day. So fans, want to thank you for joining us for this great edition of the program. And if you want to know the latest news from PWA, the find out the next time that they are in a town near you, how to get tickets the moment they're on sale, go to PWA Ohio on Facebook for all of that information, exclusive highlights. As we said, 
up to the minute news about the happenings in PWA. And if you'd like to be a sponsor for PWA, you can go to PWAohio.com and find out all, all that information as well. So thank you for joining us. Come back next time for more PWA on YouTube.